Hi, Jessica Oots here. Um, Jessica Oots Real Estate in Layton, Utah. I'm excited to be here today. Some of you may know that I have a, a series going on that helps maintenance and safety in the home. So I'm super excited for that. Uh, but I also wanted to take just a few minutes and sit down and speak to maybe some of the first time home buyers, but also some of my repeat buyers. The biggest question that I have is down payment. How does that work? How much do I have to have? And why is it important? So I want to take a few minutes and we'll just jump right in. Uh, your lender will help you provide at the beginning a pre-approval amount. And that will be based upon your income, your expenses, and your debt. And then you'll decide how much down payment you want. It's one of those things that's flexible. The minimum we see is about 3%. A first time home buyer can get a Utah housing loan. They're a little bit more difficult because it's a government loan. So you do have to do a little bit more of the song and dance to make sure that you qualify for those. Um, but that can get you in as, at zero down. The drawback of that right now is that not a lot of home sellers are accepting those offers because, well, there's so many buyers to choose from and those ones are the hardest ones to deal with when it comes to selling a home. So keep that in mind, that the less down payment you have, it it's kind of a deterrent to the seller to want to pick you um, in another market. Um, you may be able to be okay and we've seen that in the past where buying a home was an easier thing to do because there were so many homes on the market and not as many people wanting to buy. So we notice that that does make some change and it makes a difference, uh, the amount of down payment. So now that we've answered, what does it have to be? Well, it has to be somewhere between zero, three percent or a hundred percent. If you have a hundred percent, I'm using that a hundred percent down payment, you then become a cash buyer and you don't have to go through the appraisal system should you choose not to. I still recommend that if you're interested in having those numbers, it's an important thing to do. So we'll make sure we address appraisal in a different video because it's a whole nother thing. But today we're gonna make sure we know how much we should have for a down payment. So now we know um, usually the minimum is 3%. That's what you wanna have. Now we say sometimes 3%, but there's a magic number I call it magic, at 20% down. What happens at 20% down is you no longer are responsible to pay PMI, or private mortgage insurance. Right now, that's around 0.8% of the cost of the loan, but if you have 20% down, you no longer have to pay that 8%. You'll still have to pay your insurance on the home, You'll have to pay your taxes on the home, your interest to borrow the loan, and your principal, which is buying down your home and building equity. But again, that's a whole nother video. We'll make sure to get through that one as well. Right now, we're gonna continue to talk about that down payment. So 20% down saves you some money in the long run, not needing to pay that PMI. You can refinance once you have your debt pay down and maybe some appreciation has happened and you now own 20% of the equity in the home. But again, another topic for another day. So now we've decided we want to have somewhere between 3 and 20% down. Let's say that you were pre-approved for a loan with your lender at about $350,000. The average first time home buyer in Utah is somewhere between three fifty and four hundred thousand dollars. So that's why I'm picking this three hundred and fifty amount. Let's say that you wanted to have five percent down. Or it would be seventeen thousand five hundred dollars. This is money that you would need to have cash on hand. You would have to have proof of that either in a bank account, a checking account, savings account. Um, it can be in some kind of a trust that you have access to, but you do have to show your lender that you have access to that money and that you'll be able to provide it at the closing table because it will be required that this down payment be paid. So. Let's say that you had the $350,000 loan. You've got $17,500 or 5% of the loan in cash on the side. 
you're now qualified or pre-approved to purchase a $367,500 home. So let's try this again. Let's say that instead of 5% down, we want to put the 20% down. And we want to put 20% down so we can avoid this private mortgage insurance. You then would qualify again for $350,000 home. Your down payment of 20% would now be $70,000. Because 20% of $350,000 is $70,000. You would now be qualified or pre-approved to purchase a home worth $420,000. One thing that we are seeing right now in this market, and I'm hoping things are tapering off a little bit, it's kind of what I'm noticing, what we're seeing in the market. So we hope that we had this big spike um, right now. It's July of 2021. Um, and we've just had this giant spike in prices of homes. We're starting to see a taper off. Um, will it go up? Will it go down? Remains to be seen. My personal opinion, I'm hoping it will plateau for a while. Uh, our builders are saying three to five years before they can catch up with the supply demand and interest rates are staying low. That's another tangent. Um, one thing I do want to mention about this, um, the amount of down payment that you have is going to make a stronger offer. Imagine that you're a seller and you have maybe three to five buyers who want to buy your home. One buyer says to you, I have $1,000. In down payment and anything that appraisal doesn't cover I'll only be able to go a thousand dollars over that appraisal amount buyer two says oh well I have five thousand dollars and anything that appraisal doesn't cover I'll be able to pay five thousand dollars more than that or you have buyer number three who has twenty thousand dollars which of those three people would you choose if you were the seller of this home? Someone that was able and willing to pay the amount needed above appraisal to be able to realize the full value of your offer? Or would you prefer the thousand dollar? Well, I think you know as well as I do, I would pick the $20,000, not because of greed, but because I know that this person has the funds and it will make for a smoother transaction. So, which would you choose? Let me know what else it is that you'd like to know. I'm starting with down payment because like I said, that's the number one question that I get. Down payment, um, probably close to it, number two, interest rates. Um, so that's a whole nother video. So I hope to see you again. Like, comment. Let me know what you'd like to learn and I will talk to you soon.